Hi, everybody, and thank you all for coming and for being here. I'm Giulia Tomasello, and uh, I'm an interaction designer and researcher, and I work in the field of interactive wearables, uh, uh, material finishes, and biotechnologies. So today I'm going to present you the project that got uh, the grand prize for the artistic exploration, and it's called Future Flora. But uh, first I would like to start with uh, a statement which uh, I always like to mention. So that's me. I'm a woman. I have a body. And my body is a social construction rather than a naturally given datum. And it's a statement from uh, Simone de Beauvoir. So it's really explaining how the woman in the society can be understood in two ways, from the natural woman and from the woman that is actually constructed from what the society is thinking. In my field, in my background, so I'm a product designer and naturally I've been growing then with technology, so as an interaction designer, and I work in the field of biohacking, wearables, 3D printing, and biocouture. So those are a few of my projects that are in uh, the slides. And uh, what I'm working uh, with, or what I try to aim every time, is to question and communicate the boundaries between technology and our bodies. So really try to work on this relationship between them. This is one of the environments which I love to work on. And uh, it's a biohacker space. So this in particular is uh, at, uh, in London, in Acne, so it's a, it's a really DIY biohacking space in a maker space where people like me, like, like you, uh, that are just interested and in, uh, amateur on working with, uh, from wood to technology and to biology, they can go and uh, start to grow bacteria or grow microorganisms. So as you can see, it's a really multidisciplinary multidisciplinary environment because you can merge different uh, um, dis disciplines from design to technology to biology. So what I start to do is to grow uh, cellulose at the beginning. And I was growing cellulose like kombucha, that is a, a fermented fungus coming from the fermentation of sugar, tea, and vinegar. This fermentation from the bacteria, it grows this cellulose on the top that when you, as you can see, you kind of pull it out from the bath, it really looks like a vegetable leather. And there are already many designers, like Susan Lee, uh, which they uh, work with it to make a uh, wearable dress, which they are not wearable really yet, because as soon as you are wearing them, the moisture of your skin is making the cellulose wet again, so breakable. And, uh, in my uh, study, what I wanted to do is trying to hack the process of uh, the kombucha growing and making it conductive. So in my specialization, I work with electronic textiles, so textiles that are embedded with technology or with uh, um, copper inside, so a textile can be resistant or conductive. And what I wanted to do is trying to make a biological textile conductive. So at the end of the circle, it was sustainable because the biological part you could recycle and reuse the conductivity. So what I was really trying is to grow a bioconductive skin, even though our skin, if you think about it, it's already conductive. And then I moved to bacteria. So I was really growing bacteria and growing biotextiles, as I call them, because I was really trying to merge bacteria and textile and to see how we can wear bacteria, actually. And the process became so quick and I was so passionate that I started to grow them at home. So from the lab I was at home and I really was domesticating biotechnology because if you think they're not like a piece of wood or metal that you take them and you cut and you use them, they're actually living organisms. So you need to nurture them, you need to let them grow, you need to feed them and you need to take care of them. So you need to see if they're growing good and when you're using them if they're alive or if they're already dead. So why the bacteria? Because as we all should know, in our skin microbiome, we are made by the 90% of bacteria and only the 10% of human cell. So if you will start to think that actually maybe we should sometimes think more about these invisible organisms that are surrounding us, then you will change the way you behave because you, you feel aware of something that is going on. 
And the field where I'm working on using technology and using wearable technology is the field of women's healthcare and female taboo. So, this was my question at the time. What if we would wear bacteria to empower women? So what if you actually think that our makeup is made of bacteria, it's made of something that is living organism, and what actually if you're using them for another purpose? So this is the project, Future Flora, is an harvesting kit designed for women to treat and prevent vaginal infection. Uh, the woman with the kit can make her own pad that is made of bacteria, that are healthy bacteria that uh, you can find in a pipette in the kit. And when you're growing, you are growing really your uh, treatment. So the woman is becoming a participant in this world of science and uh, of her own treatment. And uh, this, this project is coming from different case studies, quite interesting. So the first one, Bacteria, it's a, a product that uh, they launched in the US in 2010. And uh, it was this, is a soap, essentially, made of bacteria. So the, uh, the scientists behind really um, confirmed that actually, if we are made with bacteria, why we only, we every time wash ourselves to clean them out? Why every time we bleach things? And uh, so why not that we actually wash ourselves with bacteria to keep our, the balance in our body? I didn't see it yet in the market, but uh, it was uh, launched in 2010. The second one in the, mil in the middle is a yogurt tampon. So basically, our grandmas, they were suffering as well of vaginal infection, and they didn't have any cream that we have now. So what they were doing, it was to put yogurt in their vagina or in their underwear. And why? This is because the vaginal flora is made mainly on, pro on probiotics or lactobacillus and are the same probiotics that are in the yogurt. So why not to put yogurt in the underwear? And uh, the last case study, it's called vaginal seeding. So this is very recent and it was quite uh, uh, groundbreaking for me because uh, so basically when women give birth through the section C and not with a natural birth, they're not given the right amount of bacteria that they should give with a natural birth. And so what some women de start, uh, decided to do, it, it, it was to really take some swab of their vagina and to put in the body and the face of the kid. So to really kind of give directly the bacteria that they had in their vagina to the baby. And the doctor, they couldn't say no. Even now, the doctor cannot say no, because rationally it works. But actually, with breastfeeding and during the nurturing of the baby, you're still giving the right amount of bacteria. So with Future Flora, you're really growing this living culture pad that when you're wearing in your underwear, it will start to rebalance the flora that is missing during the infection. So now I'm going to show you a quick video uh, that shows how it works. If it goes. No, but you can all come to the exhibition there, where actually there is the, uh, the kit, and you will be able to see um, the, the full video of how it works, the kit, and also uh, a documentary called Girl Biophilia, which actually explains if women will be able to actually wear this uh, bacteria and this. Uh, pad with bacteria in the underwear. And this project is really coming mainly from uh, the women's in 70s. So women uh, that in Boston, they were called women's doctor and they were fighting for their right and for their emancipation. But mainly, not only on this, they were fighting for education. So they were really fighting to make women aware on what is going on with birth control, with menstruation, with pregnancy, that are all social taboo. They're all female taboo that if we are actually um, a bit honest with ourselves, there are still now. So we are still in this really like a barrier on speaking about even normal menstruation or candida. So these women, they were really meeting every week with other women and trying to explain as if uh, they were a doctor, try to read and to, and to study together actually what we can do all together to solve a menstruation problem or birth control. And they made a book that is called Our Bodies, Ourselves, which in a way became my Bible somehow. 
And um, so recently, and you will be able to see it also in the exhibition space, um, I've been working also on other projects because I forgot to mention, but Future Flora, it was part of my master thesis of two years ago. So it was a master thesis in uh, Central St. Martins at the Material Futures, and uh, I graduated with that. And since then, I started to really work uh, uh, proudly, let's say, on women's health care. So this is another project that is called Kant. And uh, it's a project where I've been invited to work on as an artist. And we were invited to reclaim the word Kant. And uh, as we all know, Kant is a, such a disprejective word that you will never like to hear it. But actually, especially in the US, it's, it's really used a lot. And uh, what does it mean, Kant? Kant, it means vagina. So if we really go behind in the etymology and where it's coming from, you actually don't take it anymore as, a, as an offense, because if you actually are aware of, of, of the word, you, you shouldn't be offended. Who is telling you? It means that really doesn't know where it's coming from. And the whole exhibition was really to kind of explain the, the actually the power of the word. And uh, what I've been working with uh, a colleague was uh, to make a publication that you will be able to see also in the, um, in the exhibition. Uh, a video where we were actually thinking that Kant was uh, our was uh, the pomegranate. So we were really kind of making the comparison with the fruit because the pomegranate is like round, like a woman. When you cut it, it's bleeding. Uh, inside it has the seeds, like ovaries. So we were really playing with this kind of comparison. And we also did a podcast on NTS radio where we are really speaking about Kant qualms. And this is a recent project which I'm working on now and which I, uh, we just won some funding from uh, the Biomaker Challenge. So here I'm working with three scientists from Cambridge universities, and uh, we are trying to make uh, a wearable biosensor to monitor vaginal discharge. So again, vaginal fluid, something that uh, we don't speak, and also women we lose every day in our underwear, and we basically just don't know what it is. And there is no shame neither to speak about or to don't know wha what is there, because actually there are also no data. So scientifically there are no data, and in the education we never, even our mother, like nobody really told us what is there, if it's pre-ovulation, pre after menstruation, pre-infection. So what are, we are trying to do is to make a, a, a circuit with a pH sensor that will detect the pH balance and trying to monitor and prevent uh, vaginal bacteria or vaginal um, or urinary inf urine infection. And um, doesn't go anymore. So you will be able, if you want to see this project also at the exhibition as a description, and it will be ready by uh, end of October. There is not anymore, but uh, thank you very much. <laughs>